Are there steps that you do in your workflow all the time in Photoshop that you feel like you're just doing a redundant task over and over and over and over again? I know I have several of those, tons of redundant tasks that I do in Photoshop, but there's a way that you can automate that using something called actions. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you're probably like, Blake, why are you showing us actions now? You've been showing us actions for years. Well, my very first video that I ever produced was how to make an action in Photoshop CS5. So today I'm doing a throwback to that because it's actually my channel's birthday, 11 years of making videos on YouTube. So I'm going to redo that tutorial because if you watch that tutorial, it's kind of a train wreck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you not only how to record actions, but I'm going to one up that tutorial and give you some best practices when working with actions. So first things first, we need to make sure our actions palette is in Photoshop. I have my actions palette right here, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. This happens sometimes we put these things in our menus and sometimes they disappear because we accidentally move them or delete them. Here's how you get them back. Go to window and just click actions. Now it'll probably pop up where the last place it was listed. I pulled mine out, so there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this and move this over here. Now, what you'll see here is just a list of folders, and there are two options for looking at your actions. There's the folders, and there's something called button mode. I would tell you to run away from button mode like the plague. And the reason why is because if you ever collect a bunch of actions over time, like I do, I have tons of actions that I use in my workflow, it doesn't separate them out into folders. It creates a hodgepodge mess of actions everywhere, and there's no delineation in the folder structure. Button mode can be good if you only have one folder of actions listed at any given time, but how many people do that? I'm sure you collect actions from not only me, but from other people. Button mode is a convoluted mess with no separations or dividers, I would highly recommend regular folder mode, okay? So ensure button mode is turned off. You'll see I have a ton of actions here. I even have one that I called best glow ever. I don't even know what that is. I make actions all the time. Sometimes when I get bored, I just make an action. So let's make our first action here. We're gonna make a folder. I'm just gonna call this throwback, okay? Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna create a action that is going to make a curve and not only make a curve, but also make several adjustments to that curve so that I can boost up this image. Why would I do that? Well, because maybe I have several images that are in this set of these beautiful Thunderbirds as they were flying over at the air show here in St. Joe, Missouri. Maybe I've got several pictures of this that I just got done processing in Adobe Camera Raw, and I wanna do the same effects over and over and over again in Photoshop. That's a perfect opportunity to use an action because it automates your workflow. To make the action, we're just gonna press the plus button here. That is going to pop up and say new action. What do we want this to be called? I'm gonna call it curve and then adjust. That way I know it's got an adjustment in there. It's in the set called throwback. I can change this set here if I want to. We can make a function key for this. If this is something you're gonna do all the time, like maybe put a vignette on something or put this exact curve on everything, you can make it something like shift F2. So every time you press shift F2, this action happens. And we can even color code this action if we wanted to, but that's really only gonna help us out if we're in button mode. So I typically don't put colors on here because it doesn't really do anything at this point. Now I'll press record. When I press record on this, anything that I do in Photoshop is gonna be recorded. So what I used to do is I used to keep sticky notes right next to me and I would write down all the things that I did and then I would record the action because everything you do is gonna be documented here, okay? So if you make a curve and then delete the curve and then make a level and delete the level, it's all gonna happen. <laughs> so we need to make sure that we're very deliberate about what we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my adjustment layers and make a curve. Now in this curve, when I adjust this curve, I'm gonna make sure that this curve has a slight S curve and a boost in the midtones because that's what I need in this photo anyway. So in order to do that, I can go ahead and just grab this curve, pull it down a little bit to darken the shadow areas, lift up those highlight areas, and then maybe make a slight lift in our midtones to brighten up our midtone area in the sky behind it. Now, in my personal opinion, this image and many images from this series needed this curve applied to them. Once I'm done, I just press stop, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Now it doesn't exist. If we wanna play this action. We need to click on the item where it starts. Now you'll know where an action starts because it is in the top most tier underneath that folder. Everything that happens here are the things that are recorded into that action. So I'll go ahead and press play. And there we go. We have this curve. Perfect. 
Well, when we see this, it says curve adjust here, and this says curves one, and it's like, ah, man, like, I really wish I would have renamed that. So do we have to delete this action to rename it? No, here's the cool part. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this curve. If I double click on this where it says make adjustment layer, that's the adjustment layer that's the curve. So, so if I double click on this, it's gonna pop open and give me an opportunity to rename this. I'm gonna call this curve adjusted. So I know that it's adjusted. Now here we can also state whether we want that to be a clipping mask or not. I don't need it to be a clipping mask. We can change the color of this. Now this won't be a button mode color. This will change the color of the curve adjustment layer as it's in your layer stack. This could be a good opportunity for you to make mental notes about what types of categories you're gonna use for these types of effects. I could say that violet is typically something I use as an effect. So because this has an effect of boosting up my midtones and my highlights, we'll just call it violet. Now in the mode here, this is where you can change the blend mode and you can also change the opacity. Once I press okay, it's gonna ask me if I want to make an adjustment to this curve. I don't necessarily need to, because if we look here, this where it says set curves adjustment layer is actually going to be making this adjustment. Now, if I wanted this all to be in one clean action where it doesn't have a bunch of series of things happening in that action, I could essentially make that adjustment here. Okay, do the boost just like that and then press okay. But I don't need this set adjustment layer here anymore because that set was what was doing, was what was actually doing the work to the curve. So if you need to modify an action, double clicking on any adjustment layer where it's listed will help you modify it. If we don't need that set curves adjustment layer, just click on it and delete it. Just drag it down and it'll delete. Now let's go ahead and delete the thing that we just did here. Click on the curve adjust and press play. If it worked, it should be purple, right? It's listed as purple in our layers. Perfect. And we also have the adjustment here. Now, the great thing about this is that you can use this on multiple images now. Beautiful shot of the Thunderbirds as they are flying over the Missouri flag and the American flag. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on that. Wow. Cool. It made that better. And it did it one button of one press of a button. I can't tell you how many times I've recorded an action and how many times I've gotten this excited when I do it. Now I'm going to go to the, uh, another image here and just see if this action will work on this image. I'll press play. Does it work? Eh, I mean, this is already kind of a finished image. It's going to make it a little bit darker and it's going to boost up those highlights. This image didn't necessarily need it. So when I was telling you about best practices, it's a good idea to try and make actions that are not only going to work for one specific set or series of images. It's a good idea to make an action that will work on many images. Oftentimes, if you get an action from me, all it does is set up a series of layers in your palette and doesn't really make any adjustments. Why is that? That's because I'm trying to automate my workflow, fill up my layers palette with things that I'm gonna need, but not necessarily make any adjustments to that because not every image is gonna need a very specific adjustment like that. Let's click on this image and see if this image can benefit from it. Remember, what did I label this as? Shift F2. So I'm gonna close this. I'm just gonna press Shift F2. If it works, oh my gosh, it's just so cool. Like when you press play on an action like that and it works. This is an image where I think actually benefits from that curve. Those highlights get a nice lift to them. Our darks get a little bit darker and our midtones get a lift as well. Does it work on this image? I don't know, shift F2. Well, it looks like it might work on this image pretty well, but I don't like how it's shifting the colors in this. And that's okay because after you play an action, it's all modifiable. Well, if I don't want it to affect the colors, then what do I want it to do? Only affect the luminosity? I'll just click on here, change the blend mode to luminosity. And there we go, perfect. Now it's not affecting the colors, it's only affecting the luminosity or the tones of the image. Now, how would I do that in an action? Well, let's say here, we've got our action here. We wanna adjust that action, but we wanna have another option. Here's how we make that action duplicate it and make another option for it. I'll just click this, drag it down and put it into the plus sign. That's gonna duplicate that action. Now I'll double click this and rename it at the end. We'll just call this luminance. So we know that this curve is just gonna affect the luminance values and not the color. So do I need to re-record the entire action for that? No, watch this. I'll just double click right into this area where it says make adjustment layer. It is a good idea to rename the adjustment layer when you double click on it because if you don't and Photoshop sees that the same name is there, 
it's going to not recognize that you changed the name at all. And it's just going to say curves one down here. We need to change that anyway. So we're just going to call this curve and then dash and then luminosity or luminance, however you want to put it. Okay. Now what's going to change that without having to actually set that adjustment layer in the layers palette right here where it says mode, click luminosity and we'll press okay. It's going to keep the same points of contact here. We'll press okay. Now, it's going to double the effect when we duplicate that. So let's delete these. It's no longer shift F2 because we didn't put a identifier for that. When we press play, we should have that same curve. It should be purple and it should say luminosity. You can do so much with workflow automation and you can continue to build up and build up and build up and make some incredible actions. Actually, if you look at any of my panels that I've created, the backbone of those panels starts with actions. So even some very complex things like creating panels starts with something so simple as creating a very basic action. Some best practices for actions. I would do things that you might replicate on multiple images because if it only works on one image, it's really not going to help you much. Another good practice for making actions is don't do things like masking because sometimes that brushwork doesn't get recorded into the action. And if it might get recorded into that action, the size of the image is going to dictate where that brushwork happens. So it's not a good idea to use brushes and actions. One of your best practices for actions is keeping the action clean, making sure that there's no redundant steps in there that you don't necessarily need. So again, Having a notepad where you can write down things and help yourself as you create that action can be very helpful to test run it with your sticky note and then create the steps in the recorded action so you don't accidentally record things that don't need to be recorded. At the end of my very first video, I said, you know, I might continue doing these video tutorials. We'll see what happens. I can say that I'm extremely glad that I kept doing these videos because I've met incredible people and it's developed a business that I never thought was even fathomable. So thank you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube community. Thank you for watching my videos, even when they were horrible. You guys rock. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things in Photoshop, make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.